Hi, this is Dave IZ2UUF. Today we'll see how much power is lost in the tuner. Stay with me. Once again, I want to underline that we are discussing the features of the tuner and not the transmission line. In this video, when talking about tuning an antenna, I mean the antenna connected directly to the tuner. The transmission line in between will add further losses that in some cases can be very significant, but this will be discussed in its own video. Let's now start with an experiment. I prepared two loads. Load number one is a 470 ohm resistor. Load number two is a 1 ohm resistor in series with a 47 picofarad capacitor. Let's measure them. At 7.1 MHz, that will be our test frequency, the first load shows an impedance of R460 X minus 14.29. The impedance modulus is about 460 ohms. The second load shows an impedance of R1.43 x minus 455.25. The impedance modulus is about 455 ohms, almost identical to the 460 ohms of the previous load. I tuned my MFJ949E to obtain SWR1 with both loads and I connected it to my FT817. Let's now start with load number 1 by feeding it with 0.5 watts. The resistor is warming up. Ok, we reach 40 degrees Celsius in 3.6 seconds. Let's try to do the same with load number 2. Go! With 0.5 watts, load number 2 is warming up very slowly. Let's try again with 5 watts. Go! Now the resistor is warming up. 6.7 seconds to reach 40 degrees Celsius. The capacitor has also warmed up a little bit due to its internal resistance. It appears that the tuner had a hard time in feeding load 2. The capacitor dissipated some power, but even considering that, load 2 took 10 times the power and twice the time of load 1 to reach 40 degrees Celsius. This makes 20 times the power, or translated in dB, somewhere around 13 dB. To know exactly how much power has been dissipated by the tuner, we have to measure how much power enters and how much power exits. The difference is dissipated by the tuner. We can do this by measuring the RMS voltage that develops across the input and across the output, and taking advantage of the Ohm's law applied to complex numbers. To have a stable and reliable source, I'll use a laboratory signal generator set to 0 dBm, which is 1 mW. With my MFJ949E, I've been able to tune load number 1 to VSWR 1.02. Let's now measure the voltage on load 1 with the scope. We have 223 millivolts on the input and 644 millivolts on the output. Now we know the voltage on input and output. We also know the impedance of input and output. Using an online calculator, whose link is down in the description, we can enter the impedance seen at the feed point and the voltage 223 millivolts. We have minus 0.05 dBm, which is 0.99 milliwatts, which is exactly what we expected. We do the same with the output voltage. We have minus 0.46 dBm or 0.90 milliwatts. From these measurements, we see that tuning the 470 ohms resistor at the cost of 0.4 dB. Let's do the same on load number 2. In this case, I have been able to tune it to R equal 47.63, X equal 0.96 for VSWR of 1.05. Now we can run the scope measurement. This time we have 217 millivolts on the input and 1.97 volts on the output. Let's run the online calculator again. We have minus 0.05 dBm in input as before. But now we have minus 15.7 dBm in output. 
We have lost only 0.4 dB with load 1, but we lost a huge amount of power when tuning load 2. The tuner is now dissipating 97% of the power. Why? To explain why, I prepared a simple experiment in DC. These are two 100 ohm resistors in series. They add up to about 200 ohms. Instead, this is a 200 ohms resistor in series with a 1 ohm resistor. These two add up to about 201 ohms. Let's feed the 100 plus 100 ohms resistors with some current. They both warm up exactly the same. Let's now do the same on the 200 plus 1 pair. In this case, only the 200 ohm resistor warms up. The other one is completely cold, meaning that it is dissipating very little power. The two resistors in series receive the same current, but due to ohm's laws, they do not dissipate the same power. The same laws apply to the components in the AC circuits. The reactive components like capacitor inductors in a real tuner are not ideal. This means that they have an internal resistance that dissipates some power. As it happened for the DC example, the power dissipated by each component depends on the role it has in the circuit that includes the load. This is why different loads produce different losses. The calculation to estimate the tuner losses involve complex numbers math. So, I prepared a diagram that shows the losses at various impedances. This table has been calculated on a T-tuner having inductor Q100 and capacitors Q2000 and it is valid for all bands. Obviously, your tuner won't be identical to this theoretical calculation, but it gives a good overview of where the weak points of tuners are. Some tuner configuration might do a little better on some areas, but the strong and weak areas are all the same for all kinds of tuners. Let's see where our test loads fall on this table. Load 1 is here, in the 0.2 dB area, very close to our measurement. Load 2 is here, in the over 10 dB area, which matches our 15 dB loss measurement. To understand the meaning of the diagram, we should give a look to what happens to antennas when fed at different frequencies. Any antenna will transfer all the energy that receives partially in heat and partially in electromagnetic far field, no matter what is the frequency. Some antennas do not work well at frequencies other than the one they have been designed for. For example, this 20 meter band Yagi in free space has efficiency over 99% and maximum gain of 9 dBi. If we feed it at 21 MHz, it will retain its efficiency, but all gain will be lost. Still, all the power will be radiated, but not concentrated in one direction anymore. However, other antennas like dipoles are less sensitive to frequency changes. For example, let's take a 20 meter band half wave dipole. If we feed it at 21 MHz, we'll still have the same lobes. The only bad thing that happens is that R is 354 and X is 640, and the SWR is very high. If we feed it in the 160 meter band, we still have nice lobes, but impedance will have R less than 1 and X over 3600. Obviously, we can't have nice lobes at any frequency, but we still have a good range. We can now overlay on the diagram the spots where various dipole lengths fall. For example, this is the usual half-wave dipole. As we can see, when antennas are very short in relationship to their wavelengths, adapting their impedance becomes very expensive in terms of efficiency. On the other side, longer dipoles can be tuned at a very little cost. Finally, let's give a look to the ARRL standard tuning testing procedure. This is made using 8 resistive loads. In my opinion, this test is not very interesting because these loads all fall in an impedance area very easy to match and where seldom real loads are. In conclusion, the tuner dissipates some power due to the internal resistance of its components. The amount of power dissipated 
depends on the rules of series and parallel components in the AC circuit that includes the load. If the load resistance is high or the reactance is low, the losses can be very low. If the load resistance is low and reactance is high, losses can become catastrophic. This explains one of the reasons why short antennas are usually not very efficient. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to support this channel, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell and uh, write your comments. 73.